Hello there. It is a 1 a.m. here, Poland time. So another late night for us. I think most of our uh, friends in the United States, it's a little lighter time for them, but I wanted to give you another update before bedtime. Uh, these are late nights and mornings, uh, but definitely something important to share with you. Uh, as you know, um, I was hoping to go uh, home uh, a certain day next week, and now that's been extended based on things going on and details that need to be covered. So uh, I'm so thankful for all of you following this journey. I know it's been a, a bumpy road and it's not professionally edited or anything like that, but you guys make our rescues happen. Um, and not only for uh, the time that we're trying to get the animals home and the transport, but uh, for the 20 years of life, we've committed to the animals we're gonna bring home. So that's what's so important to me is that this is a long journey, not just a rescue journey, but a lifelong journey of animals we're gonna give 20 years uh, or longer to. And so thank you for being part of the long time journey. I'm back in my home, uh, or back in my hotel, I call it home. So some interesting things going on today. Uh, I know people love the World Cup. Uh, I have uh, known a lot of friends in the United States that love the World Cup, but I didn't know how important the World Cup was to people in Poland, um, and especially those that uh, when Poland, when uh, they won today, I was told. So we come back to our hotel, or around and it is a party, a very, very high level, very fancy party going on. And we're kind of in our, uh, just our sweatshirts and things like that uh, because of the work we've been doing, but it's fun to see the Poland have so much fun uh, with the World Cup today. But I, I guess when I missed Thanksgiving, and came here, uh, we were told that most of the zoo people that were helping us today, you know, to them the World Cup is very much like a Thanksgiving day. So those that drove us around to get supplies and things for the cats um, gave up a very important day to do that. So we're forever thankful. So at one o'clock, I'm gonna hopefully go to sleep, uh, watch some Netflix. I have missed that there's no English on the TV, but uh, luckily there are quite a few people that do speak English, even though we're at the store today and uh, a few people didn't. We were picking up um, much needed supplies for the Cubs and hopefully, hopefully one day the transport soon um, home. But uh, we just wanted to prepare so that when it happened, if we weren't here, that the zoo um, had all the supplies they needed. So what I did today is I spent a lot of time um, doing admin work with IFA uh, and others uh, for permits that we hopefully will get in the future. But I also got to spend time at the zoo and I told you that about this a little earlier, but I, I went and took some video. I took some video of some of the Ukraine animals that they had rescued that uh, still are in need of homes. And um, some of them were two domestic cats, one that honestly, if I had any way of getting home <laughs> without a lot of paperwork, would be coming home with me. His name is Fifi, which I think he needs um, a much more masculine name because he is a big, chubby, black cat with white paws that uh, helped so much in the office today. But walking around, uh, there were dogs, uh, four dogs that I met. One was a German Shepherd that was found in Ukraine, and um, she's very socialized, but she has a young pup that is very unsocialized and an alarmist. And uh, they are working really well as guard dogs at the zoo, but they would love to find them home so that they could rescue more dogs that do act as the guard dogs, but they can continue to provide more homes for domestic animals that need it on the front lines of Ukraine. Um, and so two other dogs I met, one had a injury on his head, uh, very lovable, another one I wanna take home, and another cute, uh, big, rough dog, but all uh, could be in home environments uh, that they just need help finding the right homes here in uh, Poland for. And then I went down to visit a few lionesses and one particular that has a committed home, I believe in South Africa, 
waiting for some permits and waiting for quarantine and um, she's been doing great in their care. And then there was a blind older wolf. Um, and I don't deal with wolves a lot, but over my history, I found a few and this one and I've worked with a few on rescues. This one, she, she grabbed my heart. She's blind, but she knew I was there. She came and approached the fence. She started reaching her paws through the fence. She started uh, communicating. <laughs> and uh, I, I tried to kiddingly say, could she just bring a dog we bring home and the sanctuary would start rescuing um, wolves and blind wolves and or a blind dog. But I know uh, that we can legally only take what the government allows us. Um, but what it did is that my heart is here for so many other animals that are in the way station mode that need to find homes soon. So if you know anybody in Poland that can adopt domestic dogs and domestic cats and are willing to open their heart, please reach out because that'll allow um, the Poznan Zoo to even take in more domestic animals. Um, I hear my phone beeping in the background, but I will check that in a moment. Uh, also, uh, tomorrow is another big day, but for Poland, um, everything is shut down. So we had to schedule our uh, shopping um, for the cats and ho hopefully for future transports and other items that we need here. Um, we had to do that all today because tomorrow is uh, a day that on Sunday they don't have most of the restaurants aren't open, most of the stores aren't open. And so we will spend tomorrow um, not only uh, assisting veterinarians uh, to flea and tick the cubs, but I want to spend some time with them. And I, I have not been able to believe it or not, besides what you've seen on live posts, to actually kind of check them out. Um, they have great records. They've done great work with them, but just want to get to know them from a physical standpoint with the veterinarians to learn what have been done, what vaccinations have been done, what dewormers been done, if they've seen any issues with metabolic bone disease or any other growth issues. Uh, they all seem healthy, but we know there is uh, one cub that uh, the younger, the runt of the litter, that took a longer time to kind of develop. And so I just want to learn as much as I can now that we can help and collaborate to decide if anything, any changes need to be done uh, before they can finally move to the United States and things like that. So everybody's been working really collaboratively and I'm so thankful for that. Um, not only from how we're helping animals, but in stress relief. Uh, we are all in animal welfare. We've all done really hard, hard work. Um, we still keep having hoops to jump through and to have a team that works together to do that has just been um just been so rewarding in so many ways um even tonight uh, meredith from ifa and i reached out to one of our dear dear friends in the sanctuary community from turpentine creek just to talk and to kind of just say here's what we're going through and how are you and how was thanksgiving because to support each other in the community is so much and there's so many people doing good work but Sometimes we just need to reach out to others that know what we're going through, that go through the same things. Uh, and so also tomorrow <laughs> is a big day because we are driving four hours away to a bigger city to just kind of um, research more permit, op permit things that are going on, to actually research some transportation options and things like that, but it is a four hour drive. So we'll be driving four hours there, whatever work we have to do in four hours back. We've made special arrangements to make that happen. And this is all just to make sure that when we can do a transport, that we have all of our ducks in the row so that it is uh, least stressful for the cubs and um, can be done in one shot because doing international rescues, I think I'm a broken record that every moment, every day, something else comes up that we didn't anticipate. Um, and so we're trying to make sure that that doesn't happen. And so that's the big day. Uh, my stay has been extended. So um, uh, all the groups who are working together, we're all uh, <laughs> really incurring costs to do this. And, um, you know, we have the Poznan Zoo that's doing temporary care 
but that costs money, staffing, and it costs um, food. Uh, we have IFA that is committed to the transport when that can happen. Um, we have my expense of coming here to Poland, now extending my stay and reaching out to my husband and other family members and staff that uh, it looks like I'll be extending my stay. We don't know exactly the timing. Um, and then, uh, you know, we still are preparing. I was just amazed at hearing the staff at home, uh, everything they're doing for the residents we have there, for ensuring that when the animals come, because we'll be on skeleton crew for the next few months too, with holidays and people going home for the holidays, as you know, most of our staff uh, have relocated from other areas in the U.S. So. We want to be prepared and not have holidays hinder if we get approval to move forward. So it's been um, <laughs> a stressful but amazing uh, few days. Uh, I think I'm tired, but I'm also exhilarated by all of the work going on by all. Every team member I meet is dedicated to this journey, is um, so dedicated. And so we. everybody says, what does tomorrow hold? And tonight... As we sat there, we all thought we were going home at 5 p.m. to get a good night's sleep, and we were in the office, as you saw in the live post, not only talking to Dr. Andrew, but really doing other paperwork that was much needed and other requests that came through and things like that. And um, I wish we could just do a live feed as we were doing all this work because I want to really share that, yes, those cubs do not know what is going on. They do not know all the stress that people are involved. They do not know how many people have flown across international continents to save them. Um, all the Polish media that were out today, um, all the flight information that IFA is trying to get together and charter planes and things like that, and all the government officials that we're working with on the weekend <laughs> to try and make um, what the journey happen. Um, and so I just wish people could see that because I think what we all see is happy little cubs and then we see them at home at the sanctuary and it's hard to even quantify the amount of work, commitment and stress behind the scenes to make that happen. Not only for us, but for everybody that's doing international rescues. And um, in the past we've done international rescues that had more time. So in Argentina, we were able to um, have time. They were in great care. Like in Poznan Zoo, they're in great care. But the biggest issue they have is that these cubs are going to grow up and they committed to be in a way station for little cubs. They don't have space for, for a grown adults um, without moving other cats out of um, their zoo to other sanctuaries. And so it is a process. And so only so many animals can be helped. Um, and they do have a concern of us getting these guys moved either before they are too big. As you could see that Dr. Andrew said is he's only been gone eight days and he was just in awe of how much they've grown. And I, I remember that in the days of Dash. So I do want to answer any questions you guys have before I go to sleep. Um, I know that there's a lot of people asking questions that I haven't been able to read. But if there's any new questions that pose, uh, feel free to ask them now and we'll try to get message answered in uh, the comments. But there's a lot of things we can't answer because we're working moment by moment to make this happen. Um, and uh, the good news is, is our team back at home, if there's any rescue calls from the US or local, we are still there answering those calls. So when we take in an international rescue, we're not taking away space from those that need it close to home. Um, the reason we can say yes is because we have capacity at the sanctuary um, and we have capacity for big cats right now. Obviously, many of you that follow us know that those little Bengal domestics in Savannah's, we are popping at the seams and popping at the seams at Bobcats. But um, this was something long in the works and it does feel like a drop in the bucket for everything going on in Ukraine but I hope it can be a symbol for what people working together can do, not only for wild animals, but domestic animals and humans all together. So I do see that this feels like a humanitarian um, mission, even though it's for animals, because it is meaning so much to people. 
Um, I think I talked earlier too about even the public safety going on. I mean, you, you're in Ukraine and you're dealing with wars and bombs and no power and no water. But then to walk down the street and see a free roaming tiger cross the neighborhood or a bear cross the neighborhood because the zoo has been bombed. Um, we've also learned that um, the for the Russians, the bears are a totem, right? A totem of strength. So there are so many communities um, that have black market Russian bears that are breeding for Russian pet market. And so those are not even in facilities. And so when those areas get bombed, uh, those animals are free roaming and causing even a much alarming public safety risk. So I really reach out to people that don't, aren't concerned about the animal welfare aspect because we understand human life comes first, but the public safety aspect of having to go through all that and then still be worried that your local zoo animals might be loose or the private collector down the road might be loose and you can't even walk down to a neighbor to see if they have power or water to borrow. So we've learned so much more of what's going on um, on the front lines, just being in Poland and we're not even near the front lines, that is amazing. And hearing from Dr. Andrew and the others that have been in Ukraine, you can't help but feel for what they've been through. They're, it's life altering for them. So this is a small part we can do. <laughs> being in this hotel, being tired, being in Poland is not the worst thing I could go through. Like I said, as I'm being regenerized by the people and all of you. But um, I do know and I am aware that when we come back to the United States, we are going to have a huge financial commitment to these Cubs. And I am so grateful for those that have stepped up and sponsored the Cubs. I'm so grateful because we will be doing um, maybe a passport, not a passport, but a passport fundraiser um, to get those Cubs along in their journey and to help me with my finances to get along in the journey. Um, as well as our staff that has to go to the import uh, city. So when this all happens, people are asking, are they just going to be delivered to the sanctuary? Oh, no, <laughs> they have to go through customs. And customs happens in, you know, New York, Miami, Dallas, um, California, probably L.A. in California, Washington, or Chicago. So it has been changing from if this transport does and when it happens, Will it be going to New York or will it be going to Chicago? <coughs> we are hoping to Chicago, but either way, our staff still from the sanctuary has to leave with all our transport vehicles, all our staff for driving because none of us are going to be up for driving on the way back. All um, extra crates so that the cats have more space and we can transfer them in a safe environment, food and things like that to meet us when we come in eventually with the plane. Um, and so <clears throat> there are um, costs involved and then we still have their spays, we still have enrichment and it still has about giving them a really, really good ending to this long story. So anybody that can give um, on Giving Tuesdays coming up, those that have sponsored, so many of you have already stepped up during Give to the Max. So I don't want to plead more. We wouldn't have taken them on if we couldn't uh, help them and raise the money for them. <coughs> excuse me but we but we know it is a long time commitment so sorry I'm coughing I'll probably uh <laughs> sign off for the night get some good sleep before we start again in a few hours but um thank you thank you so much for uh being here and as many says as somebody that wants to surrender their tiger during tiger amnesty and call us in the United States or drop it off at our call us and drop it off at our front gate is a much easier surrender, but I will tell you, this will be so gratifying in the end when we finally make this happen and we finally have all the connections together to help more cats out of Ukraine to come to the way stations in Poland before they go to sanctuaries in the US or sanctuaries in the Europe. Um, we're building relationships that are uh, much longer lasting than just this, these immediate four cubs. And I'm so grateful for all the networking and people I've met and for all of you that support the work we're doing. So thank you again. And I will, uh, I know people are talking about Dash <laughs> and I love to love here. I did miss his, two, his second birthday. I was telling somebody today, I felt so bad about that. 
Um, but I know he had a really happy birthday with all the staff there getting his turkey and I got to watch it on social media. So I love Judson and Timber and everybody that does social media and the caretakers that set it up because when I'm away, I get to experience what you guys experience and um, it's very, very special. So the one thing is in the early years, uh, being away was more stressful because I was worried about the animals back home. My heart is with them. Uh, but the staff, caretakers, and interns that are there, I know are delivering excellent care. And I couldn't ask for a better team um, that makes me proud every day to be a part of their team. Um, <laughs> I, you know, everybody says that I'm the head of the sanctuary. I am not. There are so many of us that are leading that sanctuary, and I think that's what makes it so successful. Um, everybody's job at the sanctuary is so important. And... Uh, we are lucky and blessed to have the people we do at the sanctuary that allows me to leave when I need to to do things like that and know that um, the sanctuary is still TWS and getting the amazing care that they give every day. So thank you to you and thank you to everybody at the sanctuary. Um, today is stressful and hard as it is. I feel deeply, deeply blessed to be doing the work I'm doing uh, with the people I'm doing it with. So thank you all very much and have a good night.